morning drive. It was around 5 a.m. on a typical chilly California morning, and as usual, Thomas took the same route to work he's been taking for over 10 years. It was still dark out, and he could vaguely make out the shapes of the trees and buildings as he passed by. The streets were mostly empty with barely any cars on the roads. As he approached the AMPM gas station, Thomas took a glance at his fuel gauge. It was practically empty. The car probably would have made it back home, but Thomas had some time in between, so he decided to fill up. It also gave him an excuse to grab a cup of coffee and something to eat. He drove into the gas station and stopped at one of the pumps. Thomas paid for the gas using his credit card and left it on autofill while he ran into the store. Approximately five minutes later, he came out with a breakfast burrito, still wrapped in tin foil, and a cup of coffee topped with a lid. The pump was done fueling by then. He capped the tank, placed the nozzle back onto the holder, and drove off. Thomas passed by three blocks before stopping at a traffic light. While he waited for the light to turn, Thomas took a bite out of the burrito he had just gotten and chased it down with a sip of coffee. It was hot and steamy just the way he liked it. He took another sip as a truck pulled up next to him in the right lane, also stopping for the light. Thomas set the cup on the console by his leg. He looked up at the light. Just then, he saw something from the corner of his eye to the left. He shot a look in that direction. Two dark figures were approaching him from across the street. The sun was quickly rising, but there was still a considerate amount of darkness. In the limited lighting, the beings appeared to be human, except there was something really odd about them. They were really short in stature, about the size of a small child. They were holding hands and had on strange clothing that looked like some sort of dark colored nightgown. Both of their faces were completely covered by their long, scraggly, and disheveled raven black hair, which was probably for the best, as Thomas would rather not find out what hideous or horrifying features hid behind them. The beings were unlike any homeless kids he's ever seen. And more importantly, where were the parents? He felt an increasing sense of dread as they closed in on his car. Thomas was terror-struck, paralyzed with an uncontrollable fear. Closer and closer they came until finally they stopped in front of his car and looked straight at him and he at them. Although Thomas couldn't see their eyes, he was mystified by their gaze. He fell deaf to the drumming of his own heart as his breath left him. Everything stood still for an eternity of a second. He can hear a faint voice in his head over the thrumming heart. Go. Get away. The voice whispered. Then, within a blink of an eye, Thomas snapped back to reality. He took a huge gulp of air and felt instant relief, almost if he had been holding his breath for ages. He immediately put his car into reverse and gunned it. The car lurched backwards, creating some space between himself and the beings who were now walking towards the other side of the street and in front of the truck next to him. As soon as he saw the gap, Thomas slammed on the brake, jolting him forward, then backwards, his back colliding into the seat as he shifted to drive and sped past the couple with his tires screeching. In the rear view mirror, the truck also backed up and drove around the beings. Thomas didn't even bother to check if the light had ever turned green at the intersection, but it didn't matter now. The other guy at the intersection clearly saw the beings as well. He just wondered if the guy had gone through the same paralyzing experience as him. He made it to work, but he couldn't focus. Thomas tried not to think about the couple, but still they lingered in the back of his mind. He was even scared of going into the bathroom, afraid they might come for him and there'd be no one to help. Thomas was spooked to the point where he jumped at every shadow or sound. It was driving him insane. He remembered all the stories he heard growing up about encounters with ghosts and demons, 
from back in his home country of Laos. Fortunately, Thomas had never encountered any of those beings back home, but never would he imagine seeing them in the States. He thought of the type of goals some of the Hmong had reported seeing before, specifically the Bunzong or Bunzong, depending on dialect. He's only ever seen the goals portrayed in Hmong movies, but never saw them in real life until that day. Some say they have similar qualities to that of a small child. They're short in stature, with really long hair, and dressed in rags. They're usually known as tricksters that may haunt or play pranks on unsuspecting human. But in rare cases, they have been known to make humans really sick, even to the point of death. Thomas had chills thinking about it. In any case, he'd have to pay a visit to a shaman. When his shift ended, he took the long way home, avoiding that intersection. When he got home, Thomas told his wife about it, and they had a shaman look into it later that week. The ones you saw that morning were a Bunzong couple. They were coming back from their own wedding, and were so excited they forgot to hide themselves. They apologize for scaring you, but mean you no harm, the shaman said. Thomas was relieved after hearing the old man's words. He never saw or heard anything suspicious after that. The lesson here is, we may be afraid of the beings and entities from the other realm, but they may be just as afraid of us as we are of them. Keep that in mind the next time you encounter the others. Cold Awake I'm a grown man now, but this happened when I was just nine years old. I've never told anyone about this story. The only other person that knows about this is my mom. It was right before my dad passed away. I still remember that day like it was yesterday. Back then, we lived on the first floor of a multi-family home. On our floor, we had two bedrooms and one bathroom. My family shared a room, while my uncle had the other one. It was winter. I was out in the backyard playing in the snow with my younger siblings. When my mom called me inside, she said she wanted to talk. I thought it was strange at the time how we couldn't talk about it in front of my younger siblings. My dad was already sick, so he was resting in our room. My mom pulled me over to the living room. She had a worried look on her face. She said nothing until we reached the living room, which was on the other side of the house away from the rest of the rooms. I was about to ask what she wanted, but she went first. Have you ever experienced anything strange at night? She kept looking back toward the kitchen, then back at me, almost as if checking to see if it was safe before speaking. I replied, No, why do you ask? She responded, For the past few nights, I keep waking up to a really cold chill on the right side of my body, but only on the right side. It normally starts from my leg, then it goes all the way to my shoulder and neck. Then here, she pointed to the right side of her face, drawing a circle around the area. Mom continued, It's like a cold hand slid from one end of my body to the other. I didn't know what else to say, so I said, Maybe it's dad. It's not your dad. I made sure of that. When it first started happening, I woke him up to see if he was okay. His hands and skin were warm every time I checked, so I don't know what it is. What are we going to do, Mom? I asked. Well, I was going to ask if you can sleep by your dad tonight and see if it happens to you. Will you do it? I'll do it, I nodded, and with that, she dismissed me. At that time, I wasn't scared or creeped out by her story in the slightest. If anything, I still had my doubts about it. I figured maybe it was just a dream. So that night, I slept next to my dad. I didn't know what time it was, but I remember that moment very vividly when it happened. I was deep asleep until I was suddenly awakened by something really cold touching my right foot. It didn't feel like those times when the alarm woke you up and you were still able to drift back to sleep after hitting the snooze button. Whatever it was must have yanked me out of my sleep. I was wide awake and I was conscious then. At first, 
I thought the blanket was removed. I felt around with my feet until I realized they were still under the blanket, yet it felt like I was sleeping next to an ice cube. I was shivering. It was so cold, I could have probably seen my breath had there been any light. I checked to see if my dad had his shirt off, thinking maybe it was his cold skin. That wasn't the case either, as he had on a wool sweater. I could tell from the touch. The realization that the emanating cold wasn't from my dad creeped me out at that point. I hadn't noticed it at first, but the cold thing at my foot started to move. It was exactly how my mom described it. It was like someone gradually sliding their cold hand from my foot toward my head. It infected me with goosebumps every horrifying second of every inch it moved. My hair stood on end as an uncontrollable sense of dread came over me. I could hardly breathe. I tried to whimper, but the cry just remained stuck in my throat while my mouth trembled. The heart in my chest boomed rapidly. I froze as it moved ever so slowly from my hand to my shoulder, neck, then finally my face. The experience was brief, but it would forever be embedded into my mind. The next day after brunch, Mom and I discussed what happened the night before in private. So, anything happened last night? Mom asked. Yeah, yes. It, it was like you said, I stuttered, still shocked from the encounter. I cried as I continued briefing her about my horrific encounter, and she comforted me as best as she could. I expected as much. I didn't want to put you through it, but I needed to confirm my suspicions. I'm starting to think maybe it's a ghost or demon. My heart dropped upon hearing that. I became even more afraid. What, what are we going to do? I asked, wiping the tears from my eyes. There is only one thing we can do. We'll have to consult a shaman. Mom called around and eventually got a consultation later on that week. You see, my dad was married to someone else previously before he met my mom. But unfortunately, his wife passed away. The shaman looked into it and said it was his deceased wife coming back for him. She missed him dearly and couldn't pass on without him. He continued saying the only way to save my dad was to perform a rare healing ritual, which would cost a lot of money. It's what the Hmong calls Wa Danyu. As time went on, my dad's health deteriorated quickly. He eventually passed away while my family was in the middle of coordinating the ritual. Being only nine years old, it was one of the hardest things I've ever had to endure in my life. Aside from the occasional nightmares, I've never had any experience with hauntings or the supernatural. I am now a firm believer that there are beings and entities that exist beyond our world. The Sister's Keeper This happened some time ago when my wife and I were still living at our previous house. At the time, it was just the two of us living there. This story isn't about the house itself, but more of an account of what happened one particular night. It started with an argument. I can't disclose specific details of the fight, but I was really upset at my wife and I stormed out of the bedroom. I slept on the couch in the living room that night. I was already asleep when I was awakened in the middle of the night by a strange noise in the hallway. The AC was on because it was the middle of summer, but that wasn't it. The sound was more distinct. It sounded like something slowly crawling down the hallway toward the living room. I couldn't see what was happening since the hallway was behind the wall where we placed the TV console. The sound 
seemed to be coming from the end of the hall where our room was, but was headed in the opposite direction. I could see the dark entry to the hallway. There was no light at all, meaning the bedroom door was still closed, so it couldn't be my wife. Plus, I don't think she was in any mood to be crawling around the dark like that. No matter how I tried to rationalize it, nothing made sense. Meanwhile, the thing was still gradually inching its way toward me, scraping every fiber of carpet along the way. There was something oddly familiar about the noise, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Then it dawned on me. I've heard a similar noise when my wife's late sister Heather would crawl around to get from different areas of their house sometimes. She was a paraplegic. Heather had a wheelchair, but she only really used it when she was out. She passed away half a year ago. Heather was sick a lot and was constantly in and out of the hospital. My wife and her were really close since they were their only children in the family. My wife was really devastated when Heather passed away. I started to get creeped out at that point. I tried ignoring it to go back to sleep, but I couldn't. A horrifying image of Heather lingered in my mind. She was reaching out for me with her bony arms and fingers. Her cold, dead skin was a pale gray. Heather's face was gaunt and partially covered by her long, dark, matted hair, her eyes sunken, and her crooked mouth uttering words I couldn't hear, but somehow understood the reason for her visit. I shuddered at those milky eyes staring through me from beyond the grave. I'm sorry. I'll be good to her. Just leave me alone, I cried. At that moment, the AC powered off which made the sound of the crawling ghoul much clearer. I willed myself against the urge to remain crying and hiding under the blanket as I sat up and looked over to the entry of the hallway. Although it was dark, I could see the silhouette of the figure in the moonlight, slowly making its way towards me. It was in the same posture as Heather when she was alive. Its legs were folded under itself and using its arms to drag itself to me. My blood ran cold at the sight of the figure. I knew the only thing that would save me at that moment was the light switch by the hallway. At least, I hope. The Heather-like ghoul was halfway into the living room at that point. I was so scared, I was practically hyperventilating then. My whole body was involuntarily trembling as the thing reached out for me. Since our couch was placed in the center of the living room, I was able to scramble behind it, creating some distance between the specter and I. Then, with remarkable swiftness, I dashed around it toward the light switch. The apparition was still maneuvering itself in a sloth-like fashion from my previous position on the couch toward me when I hit the switch. The lights came on, and the ghastly figure vanished simultaneously. I took a huge sigh of relief and gathered myself before I headed back to our room. It's been four years, and we have a daughter now. She's four. I've never told my wife about the night of the visit. We worked out our issues, but things were never the same after that. My wife didn't deserve what I did to her. I was a shitty husband, and she didn't deserve it. It took encountering a ghost to see the error of my ways. As terrifying as it was, in a sense, I'm glad it happened because it made me want to change and be a better person. So, wherever you are, Heather, I hope you're able to find peace and forgive me for what I've done in the past. I just want you to know that I regret what I did and will spend the rest of my life atoning for my sins.